So again, first thing we're gonna do is kind of go over the, the tips and tricks. We're gonna just talk about five today, uh, and then we'll open it up for a Q and A. Uh, so again, the first tip, not surprising from from Trufla, is invest in SEO. So um, the one thing I, I really want to stress is that your website um, is just a website unless you put some more effort and more marketing behind it. So SEO is is not going anywhere, and uh, we all know that an organic lead through SEO is is they typically stay on your website longer. They're more likely to put in a quote form, and they're more serious about making a purchase than someone who uh, clicked on an ad or came from a, a Facebook message. Uh, so again, SEO, so improving your website so that it ranks well in search results, and the goal is to uh, obtain organic leads. So organic leads are anyone who comes uh, directly from a search or from a, another link on, a, on another website. Uh, the easiest way to think about SEO, because there's so much going on in SEO, is to kind of split it into three major buckets. The first is your on-site SEO. So that is related to your page content, your metadata, the tagging, and, and your titles. Your off-site SEO. So that is all of the elements that drive traffic to your website and create authority. Uh, and, and I appreciate the slide because it's just backlinks, backlinks, backlinks. That's the easiest way to think of, of SEO. And we're going to go into to all of these. And then technical SEO. So that's just ensuring that your website is set up correctly, it's running fast, it's on a, on a good host, and that it's secure. So I'm going to try and give you everyone some tips that they can actually use today. So when it really comes to SEO, having the proper infrastructure and making sure your website is set up right from the beginning um, is, is important. So here are some things you can all take away to take a look at uh, and to start improving. Uh, the first is proper keyword research. Um, and I want to stop on this one. There's, a, As you can see, there's a few more bullets here, but just real quick. When I mean proper keyword research, it's it's finding out a goal for each page. Um, the best example I can give is, is if you think about car insurance quote Ottawa, there might be 400 searches a month for that, but car insurance broker Ottawa might only have 40. But creating a strategy around getting that 40 is much better than uh, maybe always ranking fifth or sixth for that that bigger keyword target, right? So it's it's actually doing some research and figuring out what is um, going to bring you the most value. Um, utilize a URL structure. So as you can see across the top of all of your uh, any website you've ever been on, there'll be slashes and and putting pages into folders. It's really important that you structure structure your website um, in this manner because that is what tells Google what you're talking about, right? So uh, having a page, you know, for commercial liability uh, and underneath the commercial insurance page is, is important because that's what tells Google what the topic is that you're trying to, to speak about. Let's keep clicking here. Uh, targeted landing pages. This is probably one that everyone can, can get started with today is rather than having a page about personal liability insurance, it's better to have one page for auto, one page for tenant, one page for auto, uh, landlord. All, all of the ideas, um, like each product should have its own page and speak directly to an audience. When you have a page that speaks to everybody, uh, you have to think as smart as Google is and the algorithm, it really is just a, a robot and, and exactly that, an algorithm. So it will have trouble figuring out 15 topics on a page, but it will do a really great job of figuring out one page at a time. So always create targeted landing pages. Uh, easy navigation and user experience. So we are going to talk a little bit about uh, website design, but just make sure your page is easy to navigate and easy to get through. Because believe it or not, Google does monitor the users on your site, right? So they know, hey, it took Jordan this long to get through to the payment page. Hey, it took Jordan this long to get through to the quote page. So there's got to be something wrong with your website. Let's stop serving your website up in the search uh, results because it's it's got a poor user experience. Uh, that kind of leads right into page speed and load time. And, and I'm not going to spend too much time on that because I believe Jordan's got some slides on that, where the, the speed and uh, how fast your page loads does lead into, does, does affect your rankings within Google. So it's always nice to make sure you have a nice, fast website that people can actually navigate through. Uh, another nice one that everyone can do today is make sure your title tags, meta descriptions, and, and headers and alt tags are, are all set up. Um, and they're correct, right? So this is an opportunity. Um, you know, a lot of people, they have websites that will um, kind of put these in there automatically um, and just kind of blanket them. 
those work well if you trust the code that was built to pull the titles, pull the metas, and pull the descriptions. Um, but it's always great to take a second look and, and maybe rewrite them and, and make sure they're targeted and focused. Um, and uh, I will pause for a second for any of the Ontario brokers when it comes to alt tags, meta tags, and H1s. Um, I do know that starting in January, uh, the government has uh, accessibility standards. Um, so for those of you who don't know, when you have alt tags and meta descriptions, it actually, there's there's tools like page readers for people who have uh, seeing disabilities. Um, and it will actually read the pages to them and explain what's going on on the page. And Google uses those same those same robots to figure out what's going on in your page. So it's very important to to start implementing these now and making sure you don't have uh, pages with, with missing alt tags, missing headers, and met, missing metadata. Because one, that means Google can't tell what the page is about, and two, it creates a, a poor customer experience for anyone with a with a um, a, a disability or or trouble seeing the the screen. Uh, well-written, useful content. So this uh, this is probably the most important one. Uh, well-written content, useful content, uh, and this kind of goes back into just the research and targeted landing pages. Make sure every page has a goal and, and talks about a single product and promotes your brand. Um, long pages talking about 10, 15 topics don't really work. Uh, long pages that are uh, clearly just jargon uh, and and were and keyword stuffing will will get penalized and, and honestly it's it just creates a, a poor user experience and I think we've all been on a website when you see it um, you just know that they're just talking for the the sake of talking right uh, and then this goes to my, our last point is is fresh content so blogs are a great way to get fresh relevant content out there uh, especially if it relates to something in the in the news or something going on and if you write a blog specific for that it really helps. Uh, and when it comes to fresh content, uh, more and more Google's starting to um, index and serve up content that is related to uh, pricing, stats, and has numbers. So the more useful you can make your content, the, the higher you will rank within Google. Uh, and then uh, probably the hardest one to achieve uh, is backlinks. So uh, I love this analogy that your, your website is, is basically just an island out there on its own. And what you need to do is create bridges and links back to your to your island. And those links need to come from high authority websites, um, websites, citations, directories, social media posts. These will create um, backlinks and backlinks tell Google that other people um, believe you're an authority in insurance in your area. Therefore, uh, when someone searches for insurance, they want to serve your website up more. Uh, I do really want to quickly talk about trustworthy and untrustworthy uh, backlinks. Um, so when searching for backlinks, look for ones that are coming from uh, trusted uh, websites with high domain authority and good security. Uh, so known sites like press releases, uh, you know, local chamber, things like that will, are, are strong um, websites with strong domain authority that can pass SEO relevance to, to your group. Uh, relevant directories and social media. Um, some things you definitely want to avoid is kind of cheap or, uh, you know, we, you know, as an SEO provider, TrueFlub, we, we, we call it lazy SEO. Um, you know, that's putting backlinks in comments uh, on, on different message boards or, um, you know, poorly designed websites with backlinks to them or, or literally we see a lot of companies, especially groups who own multiple brokerages, just kind of pushing links between each other, which doesn't create much SEO value. Uh, it can actually harm harm your uh, your rank within Google. So uh, real quick, just because there isn't a wrap up slide for this one for for backlinks, some things everyone can do right now to improve your backlinks is is look at your social media, your LinkedIn's, your your Facebooks, your Twitters. Are you actually linking it back to your website? Because uh, you know, as we've done some of these audits, we can definitely see that not everyone links back to their site. Uh, and then also for anyone who does any charitable work or donations or sponsors the local hockey team or baseball team, uh, there's probably an opportunity for them to link back to you. Um, I hate to say it, but there is no free backlink. There's usually always a charge. So think of it this way, if you're spending money on a charity or donating or sponsoring a hockey team, um, we know we're doing that out of the kindness of your heart and to build your brand, but don't be afraid to ask for a link back to your, to your website. A lot of groups are super open to doing it. They just typically forgot or didn't know uh, the importance of, of the link. 
so on that note, actually, before we switch over to Jordan, just so everyone knows, uh, if, if you are a Truffle client and, and you uh, work with us on, on with, a, with an SEO, um, we, you obviously get monthly reporting and, and audits. But if you are interested to see where your website ranks or you want to learn more about SEO, you're wel welcome to reach out to Jordan or myself, and we will be happy to complete a, an audit for you and just kind of let you know where you stand and give you some more tips that are specific to, to your brokerage. So uh, now we're gonna flip it over to Jordan and I apologize if, if it gets a little messy with the clicking, but uh, we'll, we'll do our best everyone. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about a couple tips as well. Um, so first up is you need a digital sales platform. So what do I mean by a digital sales platform? Go to the next slide. <laughs> um, so what I mean is shifting your way of thinking from your website as a brochure to an employee, to a salesperson at your brokerage. And as more and more people are researching and shopping online, um, your website truly is the first thing people are seeing, especially right now with the way the world is. Um, it is your first impression. And are you providing a good first impression? Is your website set up to sell? Do you have clear call to action? So uh, we, we try to see your website as a digital sales platform versus that brochure. Um, okay, perfect. So website conversion. So the, we want your site to convert, whether that's a job hunter, you know, you're seeking the top talent in the market to work for your brokerage, whether that's an existing client that's coming to uh, shop for another product or submit a claim or a prospect that, you know, you're hoping to obtain as a customer. There's lots of visitors coming to your site and they're all there for different reasons. But the, the key is to optimize the user experience for the most valuable visitor. And, you know, that's up to you and your business. Uh, typically, our clients, that's usually their prospect. Um, but you I mean you, you have to cater to them all, but you want to make sure that your site is optimized for the most valuable visitor. Um, and you know, is your most valuable visitor motivated to engage with your website when they visit it? Are are your call to actions clear? Um, you can go to the next slide here. We have an example. Um, very clear. You can see that I know, I know that this is a direct writer, but you can see that Bel Air does a great job um, of exactly what their value user is and that's a prospect and i can see very clearly that i can get my price in a, in a matter of seconds i'm not looking around the page to see where i need to go um, it's right in front of my face uh, it's easy to click on and and they're gonna likely convert a user much quick, quicker that way um and that goes into the clear call to action so I don't know if that slide is in the wrong place, but <laughs> um, making sure the call to action is clear. And this is super important because you have seven seconds to grab your visitor's attention. And that's including your load time. So speed on your site, and I know Thomas talked about it already, is extremely important. Um, right now, Google's standard is, is to load within three seconds. Um, me and Thomas do tons of audits for our clients. And in the industry, we typically see load times around seven to 13 seconds. Uh, so you can imagine that if your site's taking 13 seconds to load um, and the user is has seven seconds to figure out what they're doing, they're abandoning that page right away you don't even have a chance to sell them. Um, so, I mean, if you're thinking industry-wide, seven to 13 seconds, we can send out a, a link to help you test your site speed. Uh, getting it to three seconds is really gonna help you stand out apart from the competition. You're gonna grab your visitor's attention right away and encourage them to take action uh, before they even know where they are. Wanna yeah. So, yeah, that seven seconds is where am I? What can I do here? Uh, and then hopefully once you um, capture them with that call to action, it's why should I do it? Uh, and then hopefully they are converting and, and filling out that form or clicking on that button that you're hoping them to. So we have a couple examples here. Um, so this would be an example of uh, a call to action that's not quite clear. I know that it's super small on the page there, um, but to me, I have no idea what they're wanting me to do on this page. Um, the buttons are all the same size. They're all the same color. Um, it, it, it's really confusing as a user. Um, I mean, I don't know what their load time is, but by, by seven seconds, I, I'm sure I don't know where I'm supposed to be clicking on this page. Um, and then if we have our, our next example there, with a clear call to action uh, and hopefully paired with a, a good load time, I can see very quickly that, okay, 
this is where I'm supposed to fill out my information and I'm going to get a quote immediately. So before I even know where I am and, and where I'm supposed to click, it's right in front of me. So we're creating a frictionless experience for the user, um, which brings me to friction in, in the next topic is you want to eliminate any friction possible. So I think something really important to this industry specific is nobody likes to shop for insurance. They're only there because they need to be. So to make the experience as seamless as possible is super, super important. Um, I mean, when I'm shopping for clothes, that's something that I want um, and I'm excited to buy, but I still don't want to be filling out 20 forms to let them know what my sizes are. So when we have a form like this, for example, where there's 55 plus questions for a product that I don't even want, the likelihood of me dropping off in the middle of this form is extremely high. Um, because like I said, they, they already don't want to be there. So creating the least amount of friction as possible and a test that you can do yourself is how many clicks did it take you to get to that page? You know, from the second you're on your homepage to clicking on that get a quote button to filling out the form. How many clicks did it take you to get there? And test it with your family or friends, people that might not have been to your website before. I mean, testing internally can kind of skew your answers there. But um, yeah, I mean, pretty clear there that it's not a not something I'd be excited to fill out, that's for sure. Um, and then I think we just wrap things up here. So. Really, there's a few key things there. You wanna make sure that your page is clean, clear. Uh, it's very easy to see the call to action. It's easy to see what you're wanting the user to do. Um, minimizing friction. Another thing here is security on your site. So that's something, especially in insurance, if you're filling out any personal information, credit card numbers, uh, I know myself and, and many people are looking for that little lock on the left-hand side of your of your screen to make sure that that site is secure before I enter any sort of personal information. Um, so very important to make sure that your site is secure, you know, your load times are, are fast and, and really it is the first impression. So if the site's kind of looking old and dingy and I don't know where my information's going, I might not want to put it in there. So just making sure that as a user coming to a new site, they don't know anything about you, that you're showing your brand off properly uh, and it's easy for the user to give you their information and, and become a prospect. Okay, and next is lead management system. So if you're doing a great job with your website and it is truly a digital sales platform, then I would definitely recommend that you would need a lead management system. So what is a lead management system? Um, it's a system that processes all of your leads, so that can be both online and offline. Um, you know, we're wanting to file, distribute, prioritize those leads, follow up with leads that have fallen off or maybe haven't completed the process online, um, but also to lead nurture and make the most of the leads that you have. Um, so we can see here, you know, the goal is to get people to your website using SEO, have a fantastic website to help convert those users, and then those users are gonna go into your lead management tool. So, you know, this is great not only for the user because they're getting a contact right away um, with different automated communications, but also for your brokers inside your brokerage to have reminders to call the, the lead, to prioritize leads. Um, also for the principals of the brokerage to calculate their ROI on any spend. Are you guys buying leads? Are you spending money on SEO or, or ads? Um, so tracking that marketing spend from campaign right through to the sale so you guys can be smart with the money that you're spending and uh, of course tracking the sales funnel so you know a consumer might be completing a form one minute and five minutes later they're watching a movie they're on Facebook um, right people have a very short attention span when they're online so a few minutes can make a huge difference I think we've all seen the stats like 50% of sales go to the first responder. Uh, and it is true because our attention spans are so short. Um, and communication here is key as well. And I'm gonna bring it back to, they're only there because they have to be. So the people that are shopping for insurance, it's a grudge purchase. So to make that as seamless as possible where they're not having to wait on you, you know, they submit their lead, they pick up the phone and it's done, uh, your, your chances of converting that sale are much higher. I think there's some animations popping up here. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, if you're the bounce rate, that's the time that they're on your page. You want them to stay on as long as possible um, and, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, and making sure that you're converting those leads accordingly. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, two minutes or, and less is ideal. The faster, the better, really. Um, but the, 
three to five minutes is is key and you can see by the stats that that's proven to to work so i'm on a different slide here <laughs> um okay so here's some features if you guys are shopping for a lead management tool i mean we're biased we do have our own true leads um but these are some features that are key to a lead management tool so having a dashboard where you can see okay what are my leads for the day i can prioritize them accordingly making sure that those leads are easily accessible and added so whether that's straight from your website or adding it from a referral uh, or receptions adding it from a phone call um, setting up tasks and reminders to make sure that leads don't fall through the cracks um, automated emails and again making sure that that communication is targeted to wherever that lead is coming from and then of course recording activity so reporting with a lead management system is key for a couple reasons so it's going to help build your sales culture so making sure that your staff are following up on leads uh, it's going to empower you guys to coach and have conversations with staff where you might have not had insight otherwise um, also understanding the lead quality again from that marketing perspective if you guys are spending any money on on leads knowing which leads are delivering good leads or, or bad leads um, and as well again calculating that roi on your spend so tracking the campaign right down from where it starts to the sale um, so just to wrap things up be responsive uh, we say 15 minutes here but i mean i would say less than five the great part about a lead management tool is you can have that automated communication where you get that instant email uh, so that can help a ton and, and relieve some pressure off of your brokers as well um, but leveraging that technology and automation again to help your staff be effective i mean when we talk to brokers sometimes we say five minutes and they're like there's there's just no way we don't have the capacity but if you're able to get that email out with the broker even knowing the lead's been submitted that's going to help significantly because me as the user I feel like I've now been taken care of hopefully I'm going to stop shopping around um, and then of course implementing that lead management system in the office that can be the toughest part um, making sure that your whole staff is on board making sure they're excited about it and there's features within that lead management tool that they're excited to use and that's back to Thomas <laughs> Like today, I was getting better with my time on the animations by the end of it. So we do this presentation three, four more times. We'll, we'll get it. Um, so yeah, thank you, Jordan. I just want to uh, jump back over to communication with customers. Uh, and I'm going to talk about two things here. It's, it's communication, like the frequency and type and, and uh, amount of times you, you, you talk to your customers, but also giving them the ability to talk to them or they talk to you in the channel they want, right? So. Uh, first, we're going to start with uh, some some uh, haunting stats, and that is about uh, three percent of buyers say advertising is irrelevant to them. So that's you know I'm sure we all have about 700 emails in your inbox right now of follow ups, um, promotions, things like that that just aren't relevant to to what you want to purchase, and that that's because of a few different things. It's 93% uh, of people say that the marketing communicate the marketing messages they get aren't relevant to them. Uh, and then therefore 90% of people say what they're getting is is annoying. Um, so there's a one more set of data here to put them all up. Um, and, and don't worry, we're going to send this to, to everyone. But uh, some things that you guys can implement to make your marketing a little bit more on point and kind of speak to to your customers a little better is is let people um, control how, when, and where they get they get in touch. Right. So. What I mean by that is when you are going to do an email marketing campaign, make sure they have the option to opt out. That's not just a legal requirement, but it makes people feel a little more comfortable about receiving the emails when they have the option to opt out. Uh, some you'll notice this is more for commercial products um, and retail products is, is you might actually get, you know, how do you want to be communicated? Do you want to hear about promos and deals? Do you want to receive a text next time? Uh, you know, this, this product goes on sale. I'll let people decide how they want to be interacted with. Um, whether that's through an app, a portal, or, or through text or email. Uh, a big one here, uh, people want to be known as the same customer across all platforms. Uh, so, um, you know, blanket sending out emails to clients about auto insurance when they already are your auto insurance customer doesn't make people feel like they're special or you know, doesn't give them the warm and fuzzies about your brand. It kind of just proves to them that they're, they're a number. So the more you can customize your messages to the products and to the person is great. And that includes... You know, if someone enters, uh, someone calls in, the uh, the customer service people and the brokerage should know who they are, know what the, the products they have, and be able to recommend other products. Your digital marketing should be able to do the same. It should be able to know who this person is and be able to recommend relevant, useful products. And that kind of leads into the next one there is, 
make sure you recommend relevant and, re and, and useful products. Uh, you know, for example, if, if you recently purchased a boat, uh, it wouldn't be outlandish to send me uh, an email about cottage insurance or maybe uh, um, uh, maybe some umbrella insurance for for uh, for the boat or whatever it might be like make sure the products that you you follow up with are relevant and, and fit and not just repeating 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 the same the same messages uh, and then make sure you send reminders for people who uh, left the shopping cart or haven't bought yet so that is a little bit more retail focused but it doesn't does very much apply to to insurance. If someone has started a quote or started engaging with your your company, um, you spent money on that. Whether you spent money getting them uh, getting your rankings up organically, whether you spent money uh, maintaining a Facebook ad or page or running Google Ads or through a, or purchasing leads through an aggregator, you spent money on getting that lead into your funnel. Don't just let them kind of put in their name, phone number, email, and fall off. Make sure that you're following up with them bringing them back, especially if you're doing online quoting uh, and online quote buying tools. Lots of people are gonna abandon the form as they get through it, that's just human nature. Make sure you have a strategy to, to follow up with them. Uh, so we're gonna apply this a little bit to, to the insurance life cycle. Um, so I believe there's fancy little animations here. Sorry, give me one sec. Uh, so yeah, so when you get a new customer, uh, make sure you have a nice onboarding email, letting them know uh, that, you know, welcoming them to the team. And then you want to make sure you give them the ability to communicate with you differently. Um, more and more, not everyone wants to, well, no one wants to walk into an office and talk to, talk to you face to face at the moment. People probably want uh, to try and move communication digitally as much as possible or over the phone. But even that, not everyone wants to be on the phone. So uh, giving them the option with self-service portals, uh, uh, mobile apps, uh, or even just you know the ability to send an email, right? Uh, keep it nice and simple. The ability to send an email and not be on the phone is 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 what people want, um, and that comes with you know text messaging, whatever it might be. Communicate with people how they want to be communicated, and it will be more effective. Uh, make sure messages you send throughout their their life cycle are are upsell messages for products they really want, uh, or information related to the product that they that they truly need. And then when it comes time, obviously the big the big thing in insurance is is the quoting. Uh, sorry, is the renewal process. Make that as easy as possible, right? Um, and the more information you can give the people about the renewal uh, that isn't coming just from carriers, the more uh, the brokers involved and and truly uh, providing the advice that that the end customer needs to know about their their policies and their coverage. Um, so we put this together, and this I, I know everyone's probably trying to copy this down real quick. So don't worry, this will be one of the slides that gets sent out. Uh, I want to go through this just really quickly and know that you can pretty much swap in wherever you see a phone or an email, you can swap that in for a text um, if, if that's what your organization wants. And uh, to go through it, this kind of ties together everything Jordan was talking about and, and everything we were talking about related to your, to your websites and lead management is make sure you have drop off emails. So when, I, when we have here in the pre-quote stage, make sure that if someone starts a quote, you have a way to get back in touch with them, especially if you have a longer form or if you're trying to use a form that qualifies or disqualifies people. Because um, let's be honest, we all know in insurance, sometimes the purpose of a really long form is to make sure people are really excited about purchasing the insurance and help you guys qualify if this is someone you even want to write a policy for, right? So the long forms are, are uh, an insurance of a very debatable topic, but Either way, if you have any kind of form, long or short, make sure you have follow-up emails to capture people who drop off and bring them back to the form. And this is another area where having a website that can personalize that, don't bring me back to the beginning of my quote. Uh, if, you have a, if you have a 50, uh, what was it, Jordan, you said there was 50 questions in that one form? If I filled out 45 of 50 questions, and then you send me an email to say, come back and finish your quote, and you start me at question one, I'm gonna leave. Right, so make sure you have the ability to bring people back to the exact same spot and the exact same application because it makes them feel like it's their application and that you, you really care. Um, again, uh, as we get into the post quote stage, so you've actually presented them a quote. Uh, this is another area where a lead management system really helps because they can automate all of this, process, this entire process. But um, when it comes to getting a quote, I see so many brokers uh, when I ask, uh, you know, what was like, what is a good day for you? And they say, you know, 15 quotes. Um, I come from a bit more of a, of a sales and, and kind of e-commerce background. 15 quotes means nothing. I want 15 sales, right? So kind of making sure people, uh, 
when they do a quote, it's not just a quote and forget it, and that's the end of the, the customer journey. Make sure there's a way to automate a follow-up. Um, and, and again, the purpose of a lead management system is, is these follow-ups can be automated, so your broker isn't checking in every you know, four, eight, and 15 days. Uh, and the phone calls, there can actually be reminders sent to your broker saying, hey, this person has been, you quoted them you know, 60 minutes ago, you quoted them three hours ago, what's going on? Where's the follow-up? How are you going to move this to a, a closed lead? So just make sure that you have this uh, this ability, or that you're tracking it somewhere that you're you're following up with clients. And then kind of more to to where my my part about uh, content and and follow up kind of comes in is is when they actually become a client. Uh, so when they actually become a client, that is also a big opportunity to to build trust and build authority, so they never leave and that they always want to be your client and you can retain them forever. So. Um, a welcome email makes people feel great. Uh, welcome email, welcome package. I know uh, some some brokers still send out the um, like a, a, a package in the mail. Whatever it is, make sure that there's something to make uh, your customer feel special and buy in. Um, just so you guys know, Truefla we we have a lot of software sales products, and that is a big part of it too, right? They say you know you you really have the first five to ten days to to wow your customer and make them feel like. The money they just gave you um, uh, created a relationship rather than just money I, I gave to someone and they walked away with it, right? So make sure you are building that relationship. And then throughout the year, make sure you have some ongoing content out to them. Make sure it's relevant. Try and make it targeted and speaking to products that they, they really want, right? So uh, I'll give a free idea to anyone who's in the Alberta region. Uh, if, if you wrote me a blog right now about what to do about hail damage and how to protect from hail damage, I, I would read it. Right. Um, so make sure it's relevant to the area, to the products and to, to your customer base. And then renewals. Um, this is where, you know, we don't really believe that we should just as brokers sit back and let uh, carriers take over the, the whole renewal communication. Um, be upfront about it, get in front of them and make sure you're sending reminders. And then even for this last little bit, make sure uh, for clients you, you lose. Um, you still have access to send them an email. Um, Send them a, a survey. You know, why did we? You know, why did we lose the business? What could we have done better? Uh, try and gain some insights into to your entire operation. So here we go. Uh, some tips for everyone today. Just gonna go through. Um, review all your touch points with your prospects. Um, so what are the communicate? Like what are the touch points where you send a message to your clients or get a phone call, uh, or or you give them a phone call? What are they, and are they effective? Uh, and when it comes to that, uh, the biggest thing to remember is, is talk to all of the people in your organization. Um, you want to make sure you're not uh, kind of bogging people down with the frequency of your communications. No one wants a letter from the president on Monday, a call from the CSR on Tuesday, a broker call on Wednesday, then they get the newsletter Wednesday afternoon. Try and time out your communications because each group of your organization is going to have a different idea of what they need to do and what they need to communicate and just try your best to make sure they don't overlap. Uh, and then uh, the last one is just make sure you find ways to automate. Um, the more you can automate, the more you can make things uh, easier for your brokers, spend less time and focus on, on things that generate revenue and let the automation take care of the customer service. Uh, so the final big one here, and I'm going to try and wrap it up quick so we can get to the Q and A's is create a digital strategy. Um, you know, there's a lot going on in the digital world. There's lots of different tactics, strategies, tips, tricks. Uh, I'm sure people are going to another webinar today about five other digital marketing tactics, right? There's, there's a lot going on out there, um, but it's nice to create a, like a high level strategy and plan for what you want to achieve and then set the tactics up underneath, right? Um, so where, what do you want to do first? Is it to grow a, book, a line of business by X percent? Now, how do we get there? Um, so again, just to quickly go over that, uh, review your past performance and current situation. So for anyone who's doing anything online, you should be tracking everything. You can, Google Analytics is great. If you're doing any paid advertising, you can track everything. And if you're employing a lead management system, you can actually track your ROI for every dollar you spend on Facebook, every dollar you spend on Google, you can actually see the, the value it brings in. Identify strategic objectives. So as I mentioned, you know, set goals for lines of business, set goals for how fast you want to communicate with clients, set the goals and, and measure them. Um, create tactics. So, um, you know, for anyone who says I want to grow my 
uh, auto auto policies uh, by 20%. Well, how are you going to do that? You know, is it by starting uh, to invest in online ads, invest in targeted uh, SEO, or is it purchasing leads to an aggregator? How are you How are you going to get there? And just keep an eye on performance. Uh, I'm going to harp on this one the most because everything you do and every dollar you spend and anything that takes up your time, uh, especially for anyone here who's more in the marketing role in your organization, anything that you spend time on, whether it's a Facebook page, a LinkedIn page, that is, that's money, right? That is a cost. Um, whether it's actual media spend or time, that is a cost. So you should be able to measure your return on everything. So just make sure your tracking set up on your website, tracking for your ads, tracking through your Facebook pages is, is set up so you can actually measure your performance. Uh, so I landed right one minute early for the 20 minute questions. So uh, we are going to try our best to answer everyone's question. Uh, if we don't get to it, know that we will uh, follow up. Uh, and you're also welcome to, to drop questions right now in the, the chat. So, so first question, can true leads uh, create our input information into Epic or create a prospect? Uh, typically, no. So we're, we're actually trying to uh, stay away from that. So what we want to do right now at, at this moment is keep your lead management system for leads. And when uh, they become a, a true prospect or a true uh, sale, then you can move them in, into Epic. Um, what we and, and a lot of that actually comes down to, I can get into it, building connections between BMSs and lead management systems can be uh, costly and, and hard to maintain. But the reality of, of what we see true leads as is you get so many leads and so many uh, so much volume is you want to push people towards an answer. It's either a one lead or a lost lead, and we can do much more automation and much more um, personalization inside true leads that way. And then when they become an actual sale, you can kind of manage them through through Epic and through um, True Mobile or, or other products. Oh yeah, and also just so you know, I know we talked a lot about uh, strategy and SEO, but um, with Tom and Tanya here, if you have questions about content, social media. Uh, video marketing. Um, hopefully, you saw the videos that we brought you in here today. That was all done by by Tom and Tanya's team. So, if you have questions about um, social media, email marketing, frequency, feel free to to drop them in the chat. The one time we rushed through and got the content done on time, Jordan. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, I'll, I'll I'll start with this one. So, thank you, Charlotte. Um, thoughts on texting, so SMS messaging and communications with a lead. Um, where I really like texting uh, is is back to what Jordan's point was in that when someone puts in a quote, uh, we are fools to think that they are not also on five other websites and have five other tabs open and they're, they're putting in quotes everywhere, right? So a text or an SMS message right away uh, is a great way to make me stop searching, right? Um, if anyone, uh, back to the, the one slide here, uh, where where it's the uh, I mean, second let me go back but the the slide where it's um, getting people as they as they drop off or the second they put in a quote if you can send them a message right away the hope of that is that they stop looking uh, mm -hmm. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. Sorry, 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 sorry. Right as I was leading up. So, uh, actually, real quick, Tanya, can you hear me okay? Because it was getting a little fuzzy there for a second. Okay. Um, so, yeah, just the text message is great to um, let people know you, you contacted them. And the other place where text message is great is when it comes to uh, the quote. So, just remind people that they got the quote, especially if you've emailed it to them instead of over the phone. Just texting me, hey, you're, there's a quote waiting for you in your inbox. Um, outside of that, the texting, uh, for, for a product like insurance, I, I do find it after that, like, I don't really need texts about what's going on or, or things going on in the organization, like the, the way I would, uh, like a newsletter. Um, but it is nice, uh, to get a text closer to your renewal. Um, it, it might be nice to, Hey, don't worry, Thomas, we've taken care of everything for you. That's where texting can come in. It texting, um, when you connect with people on that level it needs to be extremely relevant. Otherwise, it will become annoying very quickly. I can take this question from Teresa. Um, so having a separate lead management and not 
adding the prospect to Epic? Is that not double entry? So as Thomas was saying, the goal is to use the lead management tool for leads and move them to either won or lost. I mean, when we talk about 15 quotes a day, how many of those are being bound? We only want the bound clients in your BMS. Um, and so, and double entry, no, because hopefully those leads are coming straight through your website. So the first entry is automatic. It's coming from your site. Um, and so really the broker's only entering that into your BMS if they've sold it, uh, which is motivation for them there. Perfect. And I'm going to jump over um, to Nancy's question so, so everyone can see it. Uh, what, in relation to backlinks, does it help to make sure each social media post has a link to your website or a page on your site? Uh, yes. So when you create a post, um, it doesn't have to be every time, uh, but especially if it's relevant, right? So you want to have it linked to, um, you know, if you're writing a, a nice blog post about, actually I'm going to use uh, an example of one I know Tom made for an organization about um, uh, but auto insurance, if you're talking about uh, hail damage in Alberta, make sure it links back to a blog uh, that you've written about hail damage in Alberta, right? Um, the, and just make sure it's always going to connect to a relevant link, and that, that does help. Um, you are, over time, they're, they're, they hold less and less value if it's your post on your Facebook page, linking back to your website. What's always great is if you can get other uh, groups to post about your topics and bring them back. So again, uh, I'll give uh, some, some, some easy advice here. If you write a really great blog about uh, how to protect your, your car during a, a hailstorm, uh, there's no reason why you can't call local auto dealerships or local um, repair shops and give them that content, right? And ask them to write a Facebook post or a social media post and include that link back to your blog is a, is a great easy way um, to, to create kind of one-on-one -on -one connections with businesses in your industry and, you know, just kind of cross promote everything. I don't know if Tanya wants to take on the next yeah. one. What budget should we keep for digital marketing in the textile industry? Oh, so I was going to wait for a few more questions coming through. Oh yeah, so uh, actually, Tanya, you can you can jump in if you want. So uh, just back to my last point about uh, always putting a link in. Uh, as I, as I mentioned, Facebook does find it a little annoying if you do it constantly, but there are other tool like other platforms like Twitter and LinkedIn where if you use it sparingly, it does it does promote. Again, what Google really looks at is is the content relevant and is it important? Because if it's just the sake of putting a link on someone's website or on someone's social media post. Google does know that it, it can see how long people stayed on the page, if they actually read it. So just make sure everything you're doing is, is relevant and, and purposeful. Um, hi, I'm just going to answer the question for the textile industry. So I've done contract work a lot for the jewelry industry, and I find for digital marketing, your budget really depends on what your goals are. So um, who do you want to reach? How many people do you want to reach? And what are your conversion goals? Um, start, I would say, depending on where you are, if you're just a, a startup, start small. And don't just depend on digital marketing. Use your referral networks when you're a small startup or um, look at, really examine your demographics before you start investing in your digital marketing. So in the textile industry, I don't have a lot of knowledge in it. But for jewelry, the main demographics we were going after for some of these was between 30 and 45. So we used Facebook and Instagram a lot and we um, advertised. So we kind of did some backlinking and really beefed up SEO because that's when we found it really worked. And try um, retargeting ads. So if they do visit your website, a great thing to do, especially with something so visual like the textile industry, look into investing money on advertising there. But as a number, I can't really tell you unless we really know what your goals are. And just to apply that to uh, to everyone in insurance is, is you can, uh, with some level of certainty, predict, you know, I'm going to spend this much money on ads, therefore I'll get this many visits to my website. If my website is properly uh, set up, I should get this many leads. And then you apply your closing ratio to it. So you should be able to, to somewhat predict um, the uh, your closing ratio and your return on investment for, for spend through channels like AdWords. Um, a little, you can do it pretty well through Facebook and LinkedIn. It's a little hard to calculate, but but AdWords is is, is probably the, the first one to, to really um, set that funnel up for you. Uh, so if there's any more questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. If not, I was going to put Tom on the spot and see if he wants to give us five quick tips for how to make a, one of his fancy videos. Uh, <laughs> 
uh, everyone knows Tom obviously showed up. Uh, Tom's working from home today and not in the office, which is why I have this giant light hitting the side of my head. Um, where if he was here to help me, he, he would help me figure it out. So, <laughs> Actually, if you guys tune into our uh, social media channels, later this week we're going to have a video about how to make easy videos um, for your business. And I'm going to give you – so I do all the video here, and I'm going to give you some quick tips uh, how you can make – videos on a limited amount of budget. So uh, stay tuned for that. It'll either be this week or next week, but we're going to have a video all about that. So that's yeah. coming soon. I don't want to <laughs> give away the secret sauce just yet. Okay, okay. So now you have to follow up. That, there you go. That's marketing 101. Hook them for <laughs> later. <laughs> right. On that note, though, for anyone who is a true mobile customer, uh, I know a lot, of, a lot of people aren't aware of it, but we do have um, promotional videos that we uh, white label and can rebrand to be for your brokerage that you can send out to your clients. Uh, especially now with the bulk up upload feature, you can send them all the video explaining what the app is and what it does and, and the benefits of it. Uh, and you can also use the same same video in any of your email or uh, social media marketing and even put it on your website. Uh, and everything is branded with your, your brokerage's logo on it. So uh, for those of you who don't know that, feel free to, to reach out to Joy and myself and we'll get those videos mocked up for you. Kind of just our, our final sign off is, um, you know, make sure you like and follow our, our YouTube and, and LinkedIn pages so you keep keep getting these updates. Uh, we're going to try our best to send you emails with, with all this information in it and just make sure that, uh, we invite you to our, to our next seminars. Um, and if you have questions, if you're looking for just more information about your own personal website, uh, an SEO audit, or just questions that you have about lead management, feel free to reach out to Jordan or myself anytime. I believe our information's uh, in the chat. If not, I'm sure Tanya has already got an automated email going out after this with our contact info in it. Um, so if you're interested in learning more, reach out anytime and, and we're happy to help.